Welcome to the Northern Powerhouse interview series, where we're unashamedly spreading good news by interviewing Northern businesses and their successes during the pandemic. Subscribe to be notified of new interviews or click the link in the description to take part if you'd like to be interviewed yourself in a future episode. And welcome to Northern Powerhouse's Business Success Stories. Um, so we're really lucky to have James Smart with us this morning, who is the MD from Smart Investment Management. Um, so good morning, James. Um, morning, thank thanks you. for having me. No, thank you ever so much for your time. Um, so can you just start off by um, just telling us um, a little bit about you guys and how you help your clients? Yes, yeah, so we are... Um... Theoretically, we're, we're a state agent. We we have branded it and sort of targeted it a bit differently towards the investment um, property market as opposed to being a generic uh, agent who would sell houses. We, we do do that sort of part of the market, but it's not something that we say we do regularly. Um, we will sell anything from existing apartments to whole blocks of apartments to individual purchases, um, new build or existing as well. And we also offer the management side of that to the clients as well. So we will deal with the tenants and, and, and the, you know, day-to-day -day looking yeah. after the units on their behalf as well. Amazing, amazing. So I, had, I worked in property for 10 years. So I'm really interested in, in what you guys have been, been doing. Um, so, um, I mean, over the last, the last year that we've all had, um, how has it affected you guys? Yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. Um, you know, it's not been normal, um, but, you know, we haven't um, severely struggled, which is, it's nice, you know, I've had my moan this year, but and last year, should I say, but uh, at the end of the day, we're still going, which is all I can really ask for, to be honest. Um, a lot of agents in the suburbs and things are really thriving, um, you know, with the stamp duty holiday and things like that. But uh, for us, it's been a bit different. Um, the rental side of the business has kept us, kept us alive. Um, yeah. We've been doing quite a few investment sales but nowhere near the volume we did in sort of up until, uh, you know, COVID hit. So it's been a bit of a, an eye opener, really. A lot of people haven't really thrown themselves at the opportunity of being in a city centre. That's where most of our, you know, stock is. Yeah. So people have uh, not really wanted to move to the cities because the benefits of being in the city haven't been there. And obviously yeah. it's a bit more expensive to live in the city. So people have been sort of moving in with family and things. So it's been an interesting learning curve. And we... um. It was just by coincidence that we implemented loads of online um, sort of processes. It hit, but it was just by chance that we did that. So I didn't, so we were already kind of geared up to work remotely, which was quite nice. Um, so it wasn't like a, oh my goodness, panic mode, you know, we need to put in all these new yeah. measures because we'd already kind of done that in going paperless, which was a nice little touch, really. So things like you, you, signing contracts online yeah. um all the referencing online you know video tours of properties we we just started to play with the idea of video tours i'm i'm saying thinking more on the rental side of, of yeah. things um and the sort of the covid and the lockdowns and restrictions to you know being out and about and um trying to stay shielded i suppose to, to yeah. from the greater public it, it really kick-started that side and now we offer on every property and we, we've re we've we've rented a serious number of units just from people looking at videos that we've done so it's been quite nice really Amazing. are you guys mm. still going out and doing your viewings in person as well and still getting that we are. with your clients yeah yeah definitely yeah it's uh it's it's interesting trying to um sales pitch is probably the wrong phrase to use but it's interesting try, trying to get someone's scope on things when you've got a mask on because they yeah. can't you can't <laughs> see their reactions yeah so yeah. That, that's been an interesting one to deal with and how, how do your tenants feel like how have, how have you guys kept your tenants I guess um you know reassured when you've been going in you've needed have that need to do viewings and things um, yeah so tenants have been the, to be honest they've been brilliant yeah. uh, really supportive and understanding of our situation which has been nice really um because I did think it would go what one or two ways it could yeah. be a big backlash and so I think it was you know we've given them a bit and they've given us a bit so for example on inspections we 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 said to the tenants right we're not going to come and do inspections because you know for obvious reasons you know so they've liked the way that that we've got off their back and said right we're going to leave you to it but when we really need to come in please can we um 
and we've we've sort of said to them, do you mind stepping outside while we go in? Um, obviously, on viewing is maximum of two adults, and you ask them all the you know normal COVID questions, um, sanitizing, masks, gloves, all the relevant PPE, and we've we've just really sort of it's worked like a well-oiled machine to be honest it's been nice yeah it's been nice and the tenants have just been really chilled with us going in and stuff and we've just yeah avoided them when they haven't been out so it's it's yeah it's worked well you look you've got some great tenants by the sounds yeah of it. <laughs> yeah it could, it could it could have gone the other way which i was kind of expecting them to all just the doors on us but they've all been great so yeah it's been good Amazing. how have yeah. your team adapted to it i mean for you know for your guys going out being in people's houses suddenly having to wear PPE and go through these, you know, these, these strange kind of checklists and things. How, how have they adapted to it? Uh, all right, to be fair. Um, obviously, when, when all this first happened, everywhere was closed, wasn't it? So yeah. all agents were shut and all that sort of stuff. And the first lockdown was, it was, I, I don't think any of us thought we'd still be in that, this position now. But at that point in time, it was all working from home and, um people were furloughed and all sorts so um i think us finding a way for people to come back and engage with the real world was i think people liked it yeah. and um you know it was nice to, for people to come back and you know adapt and and things so it, it, there was a bit there was a bit of sort of wobbliness with i guess the safety side of it but because yeah. we we gave all the people we needed to and you know the questions we need to vet people it gave comfort and um we've not had any cases of it or had to isolate or anything like that so we, yeah fortunately we've, we've been okay so far we've managed to avoid it brilliant great how has it how's it been for you as a you know as a business owner and as a leader of your team um you know kind of taking care of your guys through this process from a leadership perspective and you know how how have you had to adapt your your leadership style um putting on a smile <laughs> uh it's been key um because i've not been smiling throughout the whole of it i can never show you of that you know it's been quite tough really to stay positive that's been my biggest um you know fight is is keeping myself motivated and yeah. and, and coming in and being like right guys what's on today and you know that sort of stuff so um that's been the biggest challenge for me is is keeping the smile on and and you know motivating and and, and things like that because behind closed doors I've, I've had a few frowns I must admit. <laughs> so I mean would you say that's the biggest challenge that you guys have had to to overcome so you know just for you to be able to continue to have that motivation to to drive the team forward during this time or or what's the biggest challenge I guess that, that you, you've had to face over the last year? Uh, the biggest challenge I'd say is not having control yeah. When, I say, no, controls, um, when I say control, I'm referring to business that we've yeah. got either coming in or we're currently working on. Things, the amount of stuff that we've had ongoing this year that's been, we're parking that idea until 2021 has, has been phenomenal. You know, there's been projects that we've been working on for two years up until this point, thinking that 2020 was going to be the year, right, we're launching that this year or we're doing that this year. And it's been like, okay, we're going to put that on the back burner. And obviously we've planned accordingly up to that point. So changing um, sort of the, our, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, sort of not business plan, sort of plan of incoming work, I suppose. Yeah. Altering that a bit, putting our focus elsewhere. Um, you know, I've put a lot of focus into the rental side of the company, um, not the sales side this year um, or last year, should I say, um, just purely because it's residual income for us. That has, has saved us, you know. Well, we have had a few sales going through. The volume has not been near near what what, what it was before. So, um, adapting to that was was tricky. And again, it's the staying positive. You know, the end is near, sort of thing, and things yeah. will get better. And you know, I'm a big believer that when all this is over and done with, the market in every way, shape, and form will come back and absolutely yeah. boom. So, I'm I'm really excited to see what the next couple of years have got in store. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. What kind of wins do you think you've seen then, especially I guess on the rental side of the business? What what wins have you guys had? Uh, wins as in new business, would you say? Yeah, I just think you can really take away from you know from this whole period. Is do you know what 
that's that's really positive. We can take that as we're going to take that. We're going to use that moving forward. That's been a real. That's been really positive for us. Um, I think everything going online, I suppose. Yeah. Um, that's been lovely. You know, we've gone are the days of having property files like this full of all your tenancy yeah. agreements and all your inventories and all the paperwork that would go with a, a renting a property is, is gone now. That's all out the window. It's all done online. So that's nice. Um, the video, the side of things has, has been really good using that and exploring what you can do digitally has been really nice. You know, we've, we've bought drones and all sorts. So we, some of the footage we've been able to get is, is great, not just for the, the, the properties we're either selling or renting, but for marketing the, the company um, anyway. You know, I've always sort of known in the back of my head, I've got to spend more on digital marketing and, and, and I didn't have any content for that this time last year and now I've got loads I can you know what I mean I can really yeah. use that to you know gain exposure online so that's a, a big positive spin um and I'll say that's about it really yeah um that's a big win that's a big win yeah you found your processes and your systems in in agency especially I know only too well and you know there's um yeah things can be so long-winded there's, there's so much administration involved so move making that slick moving that online taking away you know so much of that back and forth and that paperwork that's a that's a massive win a massive it's great win. yeah yeah it's like cut down tenants coming in and out yeah. the office and booking appointments yeah so like from viewing we and, and them saying they want to proceed we don't see them again until they move in so it's yeah. whereas beforehand you would have had, had them in and out for various bits and pieces it's yes yeah, everything is it, it, it's like yeah like I said previously it's like a well-oiled machine yeah. um the sales side of things has remained the same I, I suppose with with um uh, methods um don't get me wrong we've still sold a, a fair few things it's getting them through the lawyers that seems to be the, <laughs> the sticking point in a minute getting them all completed I've got a lot in legals at the moment that we're trying to push through brilliant brilliant so, I mean, if we were, if I asked your team, what are they most looking forward to work-wise when, um, when we come out of lockdown, what do you think they'd say? <laughs> Probably being able to go to the pub again over the road after work <laughs> on a Friday. <laughs> um, on, a, on a serious note, I, I suppose it's not having to wear masks and, yeah. and being able to, sh shaking people's hands, yeah. I think, in, in this is, is a key thing. You, you know, it's just, it's. And not doing it now is feels strange, but it's going to feel strange now going back to that. So I think just just normality and not having to worry about oh, have I got my mask? Have I got my gloves? Have I got yeah. the amount of times that I, I've done it myself? I've left the office halfway to an appointment. Oh, I've not got my mask with me. I've had to you know turn yeah. the little things like that that we won't have to worry about anymore. It'll be nice to see the back of definitely. So if you could go back, let's say you could go back in time to, uh, to the start of the, the first lockdown, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give to yourself? Uh, <laughs> budget better, I think. Budget better. I didn't cut costs as early as I should have done. So things like... Oh, I don't know. It's hard to... Um, I'd say just just plan more ahead. I think is is what I would sort of say to myself because we we all we didn't expect the lockdown to be as long as it oh, was. Of course. Yeah, I think is uh, stuff that. Yeah, if, if if I think any delays that I think we suspect in the future, or sorry, excuse me. I was no, more, don't worry. Um, always give more time um, like for that to phase out if that makes sense yeah. so i said managing my own expectations on on matters i have no control of i guess yeah. is, is the advice i'd give myself so what do you what do you think the biggest thing you've learned is sort of throughout this throughout this whole this this process and you adapting as a as a business owner as a team um in how you interact with your clients prospective clients what well, what do you think the biggest thing is that you that you can take away and say do you know what i've, I've, I've learned that I'll, t I'll keep hold of that moving forward Good question. Um, I wouldn't say I've learned anything that I wasn't already sort of not partially aware of, perhaps. Maybe it's taught me that the industry we're in will always, there'll always be demand. That, yeah. That's something that's given me great comfort is that we've, we've been able to, to operate throughout this time. And, and that is something I think 
that will always be in the back of my head as like a, a safety net, if you like. Yeah. It's taught me to invest more time and, and work into the letting side, as I've, as I've mentioned a lot on the call about the rental yeah. side. We, we hardly had any units, you know, um, prior to this. And now we've, we've more than quadrupled the portfolio in the last sort of 18 months. So it's been, wow. that's been great because um, I've aggressively gone after that, that business as opposed to new sales stock. I've gone after new rental stock. So that, that's been a lesson. And that's the, the residual income is valuable. And again, the, I suppose the business model being relatively recession proof because everyone always needs somewhere to live. Yeah. Um, you know, we may not bring in the same amount if the, if there is a, a downturn in the market, but we're always bringing something in, which I think is very important. Absolutely. Mm. So, so what does what does the future look like for you guys? Yeah, good. Um, <laughs> good. We there's a lot I've got up my sleeve. I think for the next five years, um, there's yeah many things that we're working on. People are hungry. I'm finding. Um, developers you know people are keen to get out there and and, and get working again and, and get sort of making um money again so that that's that's good because there's there are a number of opportunities that are in the pipeline don't get me wrong not all of them will come off that is that's the case of working in this industry that you know you have to put in a lot of work but the stuff that sometimes doesn't but um i'm feeling positive for, for the next few years yeah most definitely i think we can expand accordingly so i'm quite excited to see what's in store especially once all this is out of the way with COVID and masks and things. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to seeing what you guys are, are going to do over the next five mm. days. Um, so listen, James, thank you so much for, for having a chat with us this morning. We really You're welcome. Really, really appreciate your time. Um, it's been lovely to chat with you. Likewise. Thank you so much for having Thanks, me. James. Thanks for watching. What was your takeaway from today's interview? Please post it in the comments below and subscribe for all our upcoming videos or click for the next video here.